chat. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. But a new patch is upon us. Not yet. It's just upon us in a sense that it's available on the test server. Patch number 9, Beyond the Veil, patch number 9, is officially live on the test servers, on the public test realm. But let's see together what this patch brings to Albion Online in 2023. First of all, Beyond Veil patch 8, yeah, yeah version th May 13th. So this is gonna drop in uh, about... 13 days. In 13 days, this is going to drop, which is great in my opinion. Travel mode additions. Okay, what is travel mode? Travel mode is the transparent, translucent map that you can open by pressing Shift N. So there's some changes to that. Let's see this together. Travel mode has been significantly expanded based on feedback. And those are the, the things that they've added. Now persists through region transitions. Okay, what does this mean? Previously, I mean, currently on the real server, if you use travel mode and you teleport by using the travel planner, the travel mode is going to get reset. You're going to have to reshape and resize the map every single time you teleport somewhere by using a travel planner. Right now, it seems like uh, it works, which is great. Like it works exactly as intended. Second thing, players can select whether the map should be focused on the character or remain in the center of the screen that is very very interesting oh yeah oh yeah you have this over here so you basically can have like the normal mini map that just works like a mini map or you can have the arpg map as i like to call it that's always centered on your character that is a pretty cool addition if you ask me because some players actually prefer to use this as their main mini map and it's a good idea to have this as an option like, just if you want to basically and here is the feedback that i've given i mean i don't think i was the only one but this was the main thing that I complained about when it came to the travel map, the travel mode. The transparency of the map and map markers can now be set separately. What does that mean? That means that you have... Okay, so look at the map. You have certain objectives. Previously, if you set... I mean, right now, on the real server, if you set the map to 44%, let's say, you're not really going to be able to see those. If I set the map to 35%, which is usually where I keep it, you know, I'm not really going to be able to see those obje objectives very well. But right now I can actually adjust the transparency of the objectives themselves. I can make the map as transparent as I want or the objectives as transparent as I want. I can fully control and fully customize this. This is going to be great even for me as a content creator because I can just remove the objectives and take a picture of the map, which is actually pretty good. It's going to be amazing for players because you can have a really transparent map you don't really need to see what's around you if you can clearly see the objective so this in my opinion is actually one of the best additions uh for the travel map really 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 awesome greetings my fellow viewers fret not for i'm mogdan's trusty hat and i come bearing good news if you enjoy watching my master's content on youtube then you will be pleased to know that it's all recorded live on twitch by joining us on twitch you'll not only get a sneak peek of upcoming videos but also have the opportunity to win giveaways and drops and just hang out with a lively and amazing community so come on over and join us now we're most likely live at this very moment click the link in the description down below or in the pinned comment to join us here's something that i don't fully understand minimum transparency is now 30 percent that is kind of a weird thing like okay uh but why why not allow me to make this as transparent as i want to now don't get me wrong if i go below 30 percent i'm not really gonna see anything like look at this it doesn't really like you know what I mean? This is the map 30%. You don't really see much. But if I want to make it more transparent, why not allow me to make it more transparent? You know what I mean? Like, that's the that's the thing. So, yeah, that, that's kind of a weird thing. In my opinion, it should... Uh... Or wait, does it have a minimum transparency right now? Uh, Haven A... Ooh, does it have... Maybe 30% is just the threshold on most maps. You won't see it like... Uh... Ah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Yeah, like, can't it go to 0% right now? Can't you make this absolutely transparent? Like, invisible, basically, at this moment. So it's kind of a weird thing that they've added this, but at the same time, it doesn't really matter, because why would you go below 30%? Like, look at this. I don't know if you can go below 30% at this moment, because I don't go below 30%, because honestly, there's no reason not to. Like, you just remove the map if you go below that. So, yeah. And button added to open region map. Well, I did not see this button. I'm curious about that. What button? What's the regional map? Like, how do you... Yeah, I'm not sure which button they've added. Maybe it's this? But that looks like a zoom. Oh, maybe this button. Ah, I see. Yeah, I think it's this button right here, chat. Okay, now I understand. It's this button right here. Let's read the rest of the patch. 
we have some changes when it comes to custom matches. Custom matches now send additional chat messages when a match is initiated, a player signs up for a match, all players are signed up for a match, a player registers and all players are registered and the match is ready to begin. Crystal Arena Season UI now displays player per percentages up to two decimal places. I don't play Crystal Arena so I'm not entirely sure what that means. Added a confirmation UI when clicking to exit the Nightfall Abbey. Thank you. If you killed somebody and that somebody happened to die right on the Nightfall Abbey exit portal you literally cannot loot that person you cannot loot that person and nobody can so right now they have the same thing that they ask you whenever you want to leave the mist they're like hey are you sure you want to leave yes and i mean probably you can also disable that just like you can disable the ui from every other map but if you don't want to disable it which i think it's a great idea because then you can actually loot those people or you're gonna get asked that question which is great avalonian mobs found in the same mob camp in the roads will now be all of the same tier was that a problem mobs now Oh, oh, there's a big nerf. There's a big nerf. Mobs now reset and fully heal up when an individual player mounts up during combat. So the kiting strategy just got nuked, chat. This does not work anymore. You're not going to be able to kite mobs while you are on your mount waiting to heal up, which makes sense because that, that was kind of weird. But uh, wow, well, I did not expect this yeah 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 yeah. that's a big nerf that's a big nerf chat and we have some mobile changes added share on mail option to loadout ui so you're going to be able to share the loadouts through the mails boys we have some interesting balance changes i'm going to try to quickly walk over them we're not going to be testing the weapons right now because honestly there's not that much to change when it comes to this so let's just start with this arcane staffs time freeze from the great arcane staff the mob immunity to consecutive casts goes from 5 seconds to 11 seconds player immunity remains unchanged so you're not going to be able to just stun mobs over and over and over again axis this is something very interesting the rending spin the second double the second q sorry of all axes the damage against enemies closer than 2.5 meters goes from 45 to 65 to 65 chat like a 20 something percent increase in damage this is huge oh no less than 20 percent but still this is huge damage against enemies 2.5 meters plus like more than 2.5 meters away goes from 68 to 80. This might actually make it a very viable spell. Yeah, because no one uses that Q. This might actually make it a very viable spell. Because if you're able to just hold on to it, uh, at low specs at least, because the third Q is still the best Q. But if you're actually able to hold on to this uh, at lower specs and just use this for both PvE and PvP, this is just great. This is just great. And now that it deals damage, even if the enemies are closer, this means that it's going to be much easier to use for newer players when it comes to PvE. Because right now you kind of have to position yourself so that the enemies are on the edge of the circle. You're still going to have to do that to deal the highest amount of damage. But 65 damage, that's more than enough. For reference, the max damage that it can deal right now is 68. And in the future, the minimum damage that it can deal is going to be 65. So that's pretty good if you ask me. That's pretty good if you ask me. Well, this also means black zone mob farming is a bit safer because once you mount, you can reset aggro. I guess, yeah, that might also be a thing. Yeah, yeah, we got to test this. We got to test this. It says right here that mobs now reset and fully heal up when an individual player mounts up during combat. Does that mean that whenever I try to mount up, the mobs will just leave me alone? I don't think it means that. But if it means that, it's the biggest nerf to solo gankers I've ever seen. And they pull aggro. No, no, no. So right now what happens, you are fighting mobs. And if you are fighting mobs and you have the mount nearby, you try to click the mount, but it just doesn't let you do it. It just does. It just keeps you into combat and keeps you into combat and keeps you into combat because the mobs keep attacking you and attacking you and attacking you. Okay, I need to make sure that I don't press the minimap. I almost pressed the minimap. If I press the minimap, the game crashes, chat. So I need to be very careful about this. So let's check this. Let's check this. Okay, we have a mob over here. Let's attack. And now I'm trying to mount up. Uh, I don't think it works. SBI, I think you forgot to make it work. <laughs> I it doesn't work at all. It's still after me, chat. I don't... I don't think they did it. I think they just talked about it, man. <laughs> I don't think they did it, chat. So the mob healed, but you still had aggro. Yeah, the mob healed. That's the weird part. So, the, the mob took some damage and it heals, but it still has... Oh, it doesn't have aggro. 
Yeah, it doesn't have aggro. So we just bugged it. But let me see. Does it lose aggro whenever I try to attack? I mean, whenever I try to mount up or whenever I actually mount up? Let's see this. No, it loses aggro the second I mount up. So that... I press 10. I press 10. I press 10. I press the forbidden key. <laughs> but at least we have an answer, chat. The game is gonna crash. <laughs> the man, how, how do bugs like this make it in the game? I don't get it, man. How do bugs like this make it in the game? I mean, this is the test server. It's not, it's not the final server. But uh, come on, SBI. Come on. <laughs> Allow me to press N. So yeah, it seems like they fully reset once you mount up. Not when you start channeling the mount up. Which is good. That would have made it way too overpowered. Okay, so Axis, we review this. Deadly chop from all Axis. The stand time is going to go from 0 0.7 to 0 0.5. So it's going to be a faster ability to use. That is great. The cast time is going to be decreased by a fraction of a second. And the energy will be decreased by 2. Fire staffs. It's not the fire staff changes that you guys expect or that I expect. It's the blazing staff. Basically, it's going to be much easier to... Um, it's going to be viable. The blazing staff is going to be viable. The dot takes after leaving the area are going to go from 3 to 5. And the cooldown is going to go from 45 seconds to 40 seconds. This combined with the Morgana cape might actually make this a very viable staff even for 1v1s. Nature staffs. Uh, the well of life from the wild staff. It's going to have a reduction in healing ticks. And it's going to heal a little bit more for every single tick. So it's actually getting a buff. Because by having less ticks it means that you can stay less in that uh, well of life, in that ability, and you still here for the same or maybe even more. I think this is actually more. Uh, I don't know. Technically, no. It, it's you heal decently. You heal decently. It, it's all right. It's all right. I, I I appreciate it. I like it. I think it's exactly the same or a little bit less. Uh, quarter staffs. The conclusive. The conclusive combo uh, okay the, the the w oh no the, the first q from the quarter steps i'm just gonna say the first q because man i cannot pronounce this i'm sorry it's basically the q that nobody uses is getting a little bit of a buff over here we have the heron spear buff the damage is increased by uh 14 that's pretty good if you ask me that's pretty pretty good we have the fists of avalon that are getting a buff weirdly enough i don't think the devs play corrupted dungeons the dive kick jump speed is gonna go from 14 meters per second to 16 meters per second so it's gonna feel much more mobile it's gonna feel much faster watch out the purifying smoke from the helmet of valor the most used uh, i think it's for hellgates most used hellgate uh, helmet or for one-handed dagger it's also very used it's getting a little bit of a buff the heat delay is gonna go from 0 0.5 seconds to 0 0.4 it's a weird thing because on one hand it's a buff on the other hand it's a nerf because the thing that makes this very good compared to something like fiend cowl is the fact that it has that delay. Without that delay, I don't know what I think about this. I don't know what I think about this, but it's not bad. It's not bad, that's for sure. We have the Mage Rope. The cooldown is going from 45 seconds to 40 seconds. We have the Scholar Rope. The cooldown is getting re reduced by 5 seconds as well. We have the Fury Ability, which seems to be getting a little bit of a rework over here. The Max Fury Stacks is going to go from 10 to 8. The damage increase per stack... It's gonna a little bit of a buff chat oh no the shadow color is gonna be overpowered chat the shadow color is gonna be overpowered or cursed apps in general with this oh that's gonna be rough it's getting a buff it's getting a buff in terms of the damage that you're gonna be able to stack up and you're gonna be able to stack it faster and the cc duration increase per stack goes from four percent to five percent and the cooldown is getting reduced oh man oh man i guess hey to be honest finally something that's pretty good and that's going to be able to compete with mercenary jacket i'm actually really happy about this stalker jacket is getting a little bit of a nerf i would guess damage from overlapping electric fields no longer stacks <laughs> so we're no longer going to be able to be beyblades chat it is what it is it was fun as long as it lasted and the mage cow they slightly increase the hitbox size closer to the caster so you're going to have an easier time hitting things that are nearby which is great and it's also um they're also bumping up the speed at which the hitbox expands if you guys know it looks kind of like this, like it's a, it's a Kona AoE that expands. Well, that's going to happen faster and it's going to be wider at the narrowest side. So like nearest to you. We have Assassin Shoes as well. The dash speed is getting a buff. Pretty significant buff, I would say. This is going to be much, much harder to predict and to dodge, I would say. Vengeful Spirit from Demonic Boots. Oh, from Demon Boots, sorry. Uh, reworked the scaling. 
Increase the caster's movement speed by 50% and damage by 10%. For every 20% health missing, gain an additional 25% movement speed and 5% damage increase. And the max number of stacks is gonna be 3. And the cooldown reduced by 20 seconds. Chat, this is insane. Huge buffs. Uh, like, genuinely huge buffs. All right, we have some disarray changes over here. Disarray level 1 threshold, 26 players reduced to 21 players. Okay, so what does the disarray do? Basically, whenever you're in a ZVZ, let's say, the thing that keeps Arch from bringing the whole server against you is the fact that if they do that, they're going to be massively, massively nerfed. By being massively nerfed, like the damage is getting reduced, I think the HP is getting reduced. It's kind of like uh, the bad stacks in Corrupted Dungeons. I'm not sure if they're as significant, but I know it's significant enough for players to actually not want to bring a thousand people in a ZVZ. Sometimes there's, like if your enemies also bring a thousand players, then you both have the disarray and you just go for it. But more often than not, people try to play around the disarray, as far as I know. Yet again, I'm not a ZVZ player, so I don't know. This is something that's very interesting because this seems to encourage mostly 20 men parties. Like if you have more than 20, 20 men around you, 20 allies around you, you're gonna get affected by this array. At the same time, 26 to 21, not the biggest difference. But the thing that I think it's gonna make a difference is right over here. Sequential disarray levels are, adjust, are adjusted to begin at five fewer players. Okay, so that's the thing. Over oh no, I misread that. Yeah, no, I misread that. I misread that. No, I, th I thought players... Uh, I, yeah, no, I misread that. I, I misunderstood. I thought that a party of five players will get affected by this array. So that's nerfing group gankers. But no, 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 that's not what it means. My bad, my bad, chat. I misread that. Crystal Arena 5v5 Crystal League. At start of the match, all players receive a 100% movement speed buff, which lasts for six seconds. Kind of like being mounted up. That's great. Cannot be purged, no further movement speeds buffs can be received while active. Applied once per match when leaving the tent for the first time. That is pretty good, like to replace the need for mounts. And chat, with that out of the way, let's read to see if we have anything interesting over here. And let's just see. My chicken, I'm gonna point out if there's something interesting over here. Oh, oh, big changes. Fixed an issue where Avalonian Lancers could jump attack without channeling. The thing that makes those lancers the most annoying mobs in existence is the surprise jump attack which is getting removed i'm very happy about this that's about it that's about it that's about it now in my opinion this is a great great patch and the reason i'm very excited about this patch is because it's not just nerfing things i don't think there's I mean, th there are some nerfs but they're not any relevant nerfs mainly it's a patch that buffs i love that i love that because right now we actually have some pretty potent options compared to just the same old mercenary jacket, hunter hood, and soldier boots, which I'm very excited about. I'm very curious to see how the meta will shift thanks to this. And uh, yeah, I'm very curious to see what you guys, uh, what you guys also think about this. So please let me know in the chat and in the comment section down below. Let's go. Watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown. This video was made possible by our amazing channel members. If you want to support by becoming a channel member yourself, you are going to get access to amazing emotes that you can use in the comment section or during live streams, member only polls and lots of other awesome perks. Shout out to all of you awesome badasses. Thank you so much for supporting us.